Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to take a look at some Lewis structures for ionic compounds. So these are not covalent compounds where sharing takes place. This is an ionic compound where an exchange of electron takes place, and then the bonding occurs to the electrical uh, attraction between the positive ion and the negative ion. And so when we draw a Lewis structure that, we want to be able to make an indication of that, that indeed there is a disparity of charges, and it's the difference in charges that makes them attract one another. So first of all, how do we know that this is going to be an ionic compound? Well, the electronegativity for barium is 0.9, and for oxygen is 3.5, so the difference between them is 2.6. And of course, the rule is that if it's greater than 2.0, you expect this to be an ionic compound. Now, of course, the boundary where we say 2.0, you have to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt, so to speak, because you know, you can have a difference of 1.9 or 1.8, and that is still a fairly uh, ionic compound, just less ionic than one that has a difference of 2.6, of course. Right, anyway, uh, the next thing we need to do is figure out how many valence electrons each of these atoms has. So in the case of barium, uh, it has two valence electrons. In the case of oxygen, it has six valence electrons which means that barium is likely to donate those two electrons and oxygen will be more than welcome to accept those two electrons. So we expect barium to become positive two plus charge and oxygen two minus charge as the two electrons are being exchanged. So what we expect to see is this. So we have a barium uh, atom which has two valence electrons. We have an oxygen atom which has six valence electrons which means there is room for two additional electrons. So those two electrons are probably going to be donated to oxygen. The fact that oxygen has a very high electronegativity means that there's a very strong force pulling two more electrons in. Barium, which has a very low electronegativity, is very likely to just give those two up because it doesn't take a lot of force to pull them away. So what we end up with is we end up with a barium uh, atom, which has no valence electrons, uh, in the outer shell, but of course has a full valence set in the shell right underneath that. And so this now becomes a 2 plus uh, charge for that ion. And the oxygen now will have a full set of valence electrons like this in the outer shell. And that means two more than it started with. And so this is now going to be a 2 minus ion and then they form a bond together. So basically, you end up with something that looks like this, barium, which is a two plus, and oxygen, which is a two minus, bonded together, and because of their mutual electrical attraction for one another. And so that would then be the Lewis structure for barium oxide. Um, in this case, is the octet rule followed? Well, the octet rule is followed because there's eight around oxygen, and barium, which has the last two stripped away, now has a full set underneath, which is not drawing in the Lewis structure like that. And the charges are indicated. We use the brackets to indicate that this is an ionic bond, and we put the charges in of each ion as they're being bonded, so you can see that there's a net zero charge on the whole molecule, but they're separated by an ionic charge. So you can see there's more positive charge on the left side and more negative charge on the right side of that molecule. But that's how you, like, that's how you draw the Lewis structure for that ionic compound.